Good morning. This is John from the Springs Mennonite Church. I'd like to share with you today, here the second day in this week, that I'm talking about grace. And I'd like to read to you from Hebrews, one verse, chapter 4, and verse 16. And it says this. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Well, I started talking about grace yesterday, defined it as unmerited favor. It's being accepted when we're not really acceptable. It's God doing something that we can't do. Now, I can do a lot of things. I have a lot of gifts. God has, has really blessed me. I know there's some people who think they can't do anything, but that's not true. Everybody can do something. And what I can do is not more important than what you can do. And what you can do is not more important than what someone else can do. We all do what God enables us and gives us the grace to do. But sometimes we think, well, as someone has called it, more highly of ourselves than we ought to. So it says here that we can come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Now, why can we come boldly? Well, let's look at boldly first. Boldly really means to come with a sense of power, a sense of anticipation, a sense of belonging. You know, for example, you go over to your neighbor's house. Probably the last thing you're going to do when you first walk into the house is go to the kitchen, open the refrigerator, and see what they have. <laughs> I've never had anybody do that to me who was a neighbor. But if my kids come home, they don't have a bit of problem with coming into the kitchen, opening the refrigerator, seeing what we have. And why do they do that? They do that because they know that they belong there. The neighbor doesn't belong, so they aren't going to do that. And this passage says we can come boldly. Boldly means we belong. It's not so much we have a right, but we are given the right to come into God's presence. It's not so much that we can demand on God, but that God welcomes us in. Kind of reminds me of the times you go visit somebody and you're standing at the door and they say, well, hey, come on in. And, and they just welcome you, open up their arms and welcome you into their home. Well, God is doing the same thing because he's a gracious God. He welcome, welcomes you and me into his kingdom. Now, that doesn't mean that whatever we do and however we act and how much we ignore him, we're still in good stead. I, we're not talking about that part. We'll get to that later. But what we're talking about here now is that that God welcomes us because of his nature of being graceful. goes on to say, there in the presence of God, there we will receive his mercy. It's hard to grasp un receiving and understanding God's mercy. Much of what we see in the world is the opposite of that. We see anger. We see frightful stuff. Uh, even the weather down south here in the spring, lots of tornadoes. And lots of people die. And properties destroyed and lives are disrupted. That doesn't look like mercy. And here we live in a world where there are wars and wars and wars. And it seems like man cannot understand that war will not solve anything. But I guess some people keep trying. But here we says, it says we'll find God's mercy, his protection, his covering, not his sympathy, his love. And it says we will find mercy and we will find grace. There's that word again. Unmerited favor to help us 
when we need it most. It's hard to admit we need help. Maybe that's who you are. I've known some people who got angry if you tried to help them. I don't need your help. Well, <laughs> when they tell you that, they probably do. And when we think that somehow we can live our lives without God as a major player in our in our decisions, we're, we're just kidding ourselves. The best we can do is lousy compared to the wisdom of God. You see, this passage tells us that we can come boldly into God's presence. And his mercy and his grace will help us when we need it the most. But the key here is we have to go into his presence. He's not going to force his presence on us. Now, I know a lot of people think they're not worthy. I, I know a lot of people who go to church and think that they're not worthy or think that, well, maybe they hope they'll make it to heaven in the end. But that's not, that's not what Jesus said. He, he never said anything like that. Oh, he said something about getting through an eye of a needle, but that, that's a whole different context than this. Here, God wants us to hear and to understand that his grace covers all, all, not just some, not just a few, but all of our sin, our mistakes, are not putting him first. The times when we were selfish and, and envious and angry and, and whatever else you want to throw in that category, God's grace will cover all of that and make us pleasing to him. And he's especially there. It says when we need it the most. Now maybe you've never needed God. Maybe you've never had a time in your life when you were to not totally in control. But I can assure you, there will be a time. I don't know when it'll come, but it will be there. Because we live in a world that's fallen, that's full of problems and struggles. And all of us live in the midst of that. But we don't have to be overcome by that. All we have to do is submit ourselves to the grace of God. To humbly ask him for forgiveness. And then enter into his kingdom and into what the Bible calls his rest, knowing whatever happens, whenever it happens, he is there working on our behalves. So if you don't know that kind of relationship today, I, or, or if you're struggling with that, I invite you to just take a few moments and relax, think about, how much God loves you. He doesn't have to. He just chooses to. So thank you so much for listening. I'll be back tomorrow. Talk a little more about this topic. Until then, if you have a need or a prayer concern, let us know. We'll do whatever we can as fast as we can to help meet your needs. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. I'll talk to you again.